42 days after the bombing of Bengaluru's Rameshwaram Cafe, the man who planted the bomb has finally been arrested. It's a testament to just how difficult it is to track wanted persons down in this vast country of ours that in a terror attack on one of India's most important cities, it still took six weeks to hunt down Musavir Hussein Shazib, who had only been known thus far from fuzzy CCTV images on the day of the bombing on the 1st of March, and then in pictures released subsequently by the NIA. He and his accomplice, Abdul Mateen Taha, were both arrested today, not from Karnataka, not from Tamil Nadu, not even from Andhra Pradesh, but from West Bengal. It was a joint operation by the NIA and the Kolkata police that finally ended the evasion of these two terrorists believed to be part of an Indian ISIS cell. The investigation will continue now as the agencies do their work. But this episode has shown that terror is not the only cancer viewer that plagues our security and that it is the politics over terror that actually makes it far, far worse. I want to call your attention now, viewer, to something I posted on the 24th of March, just a few days ago, on my social media. This was that post. This was 24 days after the ISIS attack on the Rameshwaram Cafe and just two days after a horrifying ISIS attack on a music hall in Moscow that had left several dead. You remember those horrifying images. It was a simple post where, as you can see, I was merely acknowledging threat perceptions in India and the pattern of ISIS attempts to spill blood in this country. I said a Moscow-style attack was almost definitely on the cards and that it was likely in the planning stages. A totally normal assessment at a time when terror alarm bells are ringing through the system. Well, as a national security journalist, which you know I am, there was nothing out of the ordinary in what I had written. And yet, for the next three days, I was subjected to an online mass attack at the hands of the Congress Party's social media cells in Karnataka and Kerala specifically. Why? because they somehow felt that my tweet was an act of scaremongering in order to subvert the public mood before the 2024 election. Well, being abused and heckled is part and parcel of being a journalist in today's hyper-hostile social media atmosphere, so there's nothing surprising about that. But the Congress party had a real bone to pick, apparently, because I hear members of the party even sent an official complaint to the Election Commission, which then contacted the Home Ministry, they were, of course, told that India's anti-terror machinery is always on high alert and there was nothing off the mark in what this particular journalist, that is me, had written. But the Congress social media armies continued their abuse. A few days later, a handful of local news agencies in Karnataka, we also picked that up, flashed the news that a BJP man named Sai Prasad had been arrest arrested in the Rameshwaram cafe blast case. The response from the Congress party was almost instantaneous. From top to bottom, including the social media armies, they pounced on the story and on me, calling this the smoking gun. Irrefutable proof that the terror attack on the Rameshwaram cafe was staged by the BJP. When the NIA indicated in a press release that the detention of this Sai Prasad was as a witness and not as an accused, these same armies, these political armies, shifted their goalposts once again, asking why the real suspects hadn't been arrested yet and was, what was taking so long. Incredibly, with the arrest finally of the two accused persons today, the same Congress party armies that had jumped around in delight over news articles falsely reporting the arrest of a BJP man in the case are today deafeningly silent and I cannot understand why. Why the silence over the arrest of terrorists at a time when you've been loud and very vocal about pretty much every other aspect of the case that was politically suitable to you? High-profile Congress spokespersons in Karnataka and Kerala who had mobilized storms of abuse against me and others for totally non-political posts haven't even acknowledged today's arrests. Forget about commenting on them. It is this sickening cynical, soulless, careless treatment of terror cases that continues to hold India back from being totally terrorist-proof viewer. It's the reason why the difficult work of our anti-terror agencies is exponentially more difficult. All parties have been guilty at one point or another of politicizing terror, but now it has become truly sickening and it plays out in real time thanks to social media. 
But let's make damn sure we understand the difference between questioning the government politically, which it is the opposition's job to do, and stirring the pot for political points on an issue as sensitive as terror. Because make no mistake, the only ones who gain from this kind of tutu meme and silly, cynical finger pointing are the terrorists and the terror groups themselves. Even today, with the arrest of the two suspects in Bengal, a tellingly defensive Trinamool Congress government, almost as a reflex, said that the terrorists had been nabbed in an area of Bengal where a BJP man was the MP. It would later emerge that the arrest was the smart, professional, joint work by the NIA and the Bengal police. That's right, the Bengal police and the NIA worked together professionally and executed these arrests. And it must be said that these are the agencies that must be saluted. The men and women of these agencies who must do their work, show results and acquit themselves amidst this droning, bloodless political crossfire. It is they who must be commended today. This is today's report. Bengaluru's Rameshwaram Cafe shaken by an explosion. The IED blast left 10 injured. The main suspect captured on CCTV. Walking towards the cafe with a bag, in full sleeve shirt, a cap and eyeglasses. Seen in different clothes, multiple appearances on surveillance cameras post the blast. In a major breakthrough, after about a month and a half, the NIA and the West Bengal police have arrested the two key suspects in Purva Medinipur. State police and Central Investigation Agencies ka ek joint operation mein information milne ke do ghante ke andar hi andar ham log jo Bengaluru Rameshwaram cafe blast hai uske do jo suspects the unko detain kar paaye. The alleged bomber Muzabir Hussain Shazib and mastermind Abdul Matim Taha captured from their hideout where they have been living under false identities. In a statement, the NIA acknowledged what it called energetic coordinated action involving its loots and those from the state police of West Bengal, Telangana and Kerala. The two suspects already wanted in a 2020 terrorism case. According to central agencies, Abdul Matim Taha, who plotted the Bengaluru cafe bombing, was involved with the Bengaluru module of ISIS called Al-Hind. According to investigators, the alleged bombers received constant instructions from their foreign handler. Both the bomber took different escape routes. The man who placed the bomb reached the West Bengal hideout via Andhra, while the mastermind took the Tamil Nadu route. Investigators hope to unravel a bigger terror module with these arrests. With Arvind Doja, Bureau Report, India Today.